everyone, Jill here. I shall talk through this paper with two goals in mind. Firstly, the goal of helping you access this paper in a way that will be useful to you as a practitioner. And not only might the content interest you, but also there are a couple of ways of presenting thinking about leadership that you might wish to use in your assessment. So you might not use this content for those ways of thinking about leadership, but you might want to look at some of the techniques of how they've used tables and diagrams. And secondly, this paper happens to be influencing my practice at the moment, so I'll give you a little take on that. Nothing too detailed, but just again to show you how I personally am using this paper. And just by way of background, I will have read this paper once when I chose to make it part of the course. I read it before creating this video and annotated it. So now I'm reading it, if reading is the right word, for a third time. Now, because it does interest my practice, I probably will go off and read a couple of the areas in more detail after this to think about exactly what actions I'm going to take. But this is just to show you that the way of best, the best way of accessing these papers is to skim read it several times rather than read every word in detail. So let's have a look at the title. Huh. Good start. Direction, alignment and commitment. Those are words we can probably cope with toward a more integrative ontology of leadership. Oh dear, academics do love their words. Ontology just means knowledge. It means what we know. It is part of doing a PhD that you have to think you have to produce some new knowledge and you have to defend the ontological position that you've taken that you can uphold what you are saying is new knowledge is new knowledge and it goes in partnership with something called epistemology which you might um, have come across and that's the process by which you've generated that knowledge have you used surveys have you used interviews what has been your method for producing that knowledge so for the purposes of this, we just need to think of ontology as a new way of thinking about it. And it's integrative, so we need to sort of keep our eyes out for what that might mean. So let's go down and have a look at the abstract. Remembering that the abstract will then say what the introduction literature review says in more detail. So we're going into this article in layers. So let's just touch on the abstract to orientate ourselves. Okay. Widely accepted leadership ontology. So widely accepted way of thinking about leadership. Leaders, followers, and shared goals. Yeah, you know, you'll have come across that in the textbook. I'm a leader, I need to get followers, I need to have a shared goal. And in that sense, it's like Twitter. Go on into an individual Twitter account and you'll have the person whose account it is leading, they'll have so many followers, and the followers will presumably be following them because they've got some type of shared goal with the leader. But it's saying, hold on, because in today's world, we have lots of peer-like and collaborative contexts. So we self-managed teams, distributed leadership, where we don't have maybe one leader and one follower. We have lots of leaders and followers in the same moment. And it's talking, this paper is helping us to perhaps look at leadership in this type of context. And it's proposing an alternative ontology. It's an alternative way of looking at leadership based on direction, alignment, and commitment. OK, we're ready. Let's go delve further into the introduction. So we've got new and more integrative ontology. We've got leadership framework. We like the word framework. Framework tends to mean that there's some nice little diagram that you can take out of the paper and use in your own practice. Then it says highly diverse and lacking integration. And I've said that to you. Leadership theory is being highly diverse and lacking integration. It's all over the place. There are so many leadership theories. This course is about you coming to terms with what you want to be as a leader. But then it does go on to say there is actually a unified, it is unified and framed by an underlying ontology. In its simplest form, leadership is a tripod of leaders, followers, and a common goal. So it's saying, oh, there's a lot of stuff out there. Most of the stuff starts with this assumption of leader, follower, common goal.
This paper looks at peer-like and collaborative settings where maybe this concept of leader and follower and just analysing leader and follower or leader and followers is, is not that helpful. So it's looking at direction. So widespread agreement in a collective on overall goals, aims and missions. Alignment, the organisation and coordination of the knowledge and work in that collective. Mm -hmm. And commitment, the willingness of the members to assume their own interests and benefit within the collective. Now this is why this paper interests me, because we as faculty in the business school create communities of practice um, on discussion forums and in face-to-face -face meetings where we try and share stuff. And we, everybody who um, contributes to these forums or comes to such meetings has to be willing as a collective to say, my interest is less important than sharing stuff in this collective. And that might be a setting that you can relate to. You know, in your organisations, you might have some sense of wanting a collective where you're generating meaning. So, or you might want to create some where none exist. So let's, have a, let's probe a bit further. So it talks about direction, alignment, and commitment. Yep, got that one. Marks the occurrence of leadership. Okay. Question of how such outcomes are produced must be approached carefully. So they're interested in looking at how people would share direction, how they'd align their and organize um, themselves to follow, to go together towards that direction, and how they would be committed talks about beliefs, about how to produce it, and social practices. Okay. So, how people who share work in collectives produce direction, alignment, commitment. Oh, some complicated stuff. Let's have a look at this. Pragmatism and functionalism. These two are philosophies. So, they're ways of seeing the world. So, um, here they're saying they're working within the pragmatist philosophy practitioners, guys like you out there in the real world tend to like pragmatism because it focuses on outcomes and you can see this DAC is an outcome and we as practicing managers want to improve our management, want to get better outcomes so we tend to like either pragmatist or functionalist um, approaches. So we're, on, we're possibly onto a good thing here, we've got a context peer, collaborative work, we've got a philosophy, looking at outcomes, looking at how to better our practice, so this looks like a good paper. They're emphasising that their way of looking at the world integrates across levels of analysis. What that means is that they don't necessarily worry about whether um, the direction, alignment and commitment is produced by an individual, a dyad, so two people, a leader and follower, a group, an organisation, they're not worried about that. And if you think about it, the tripod ontology, this leader-follower, does tend to emphasize the individual. And they're not worried about exactly how the outcomes will be produced. They'll be realized in, mot in, in multiple ways. Those next two, the third point and the fourth point, quite frankly, I've underlined them, but it's going to hurt my brain too much to think about them. They're a bit too academic, so I'm going to skim those. But I am interested that they're not worried about levels of analysis and... They're not worried about the outcome having to be realized in a particular way. It's giving me a bit of freedom here to think about how peers come together to generate new meaning. It also mentions here that they, the ontology integrates across cultures, assuming that people everywhere require something very like direction, alignment, and commitment in order to pursue cooperation. So yeah, that could be really good. You know, I've got lots of different cultures. In um, my university, you probably um, might work globally as well. So, yeah, I can relate to this. Evidence in the literature for the ontology of the tripod. Oh, no, I don't think I shall read this. I accept. You've probably read in the textbook. I've read in the textbook this notion of leader-follower goals. This is an academic article, so it's got to go through reviewing all the learned people that contributed to that tripod. But this does look interesting. So the increased integrative potential of the DAC ontology compared to the tripod. And then this is what I meant at the beginning of my video. You might not, in your assessment, wish to use exactly this comparison, but you might wish to compare one approach to leadership with another. And this type of analytical framework might help you do that. 
on the le on the left you might not have these sort of more academic terms you might have elements of your practice some moments in your practice where you're wanting to lead more than manage and you're comparing how one leadership approach helps you think about that practice versus another but also it's interesting so that's just a technique you could use but also it's interesting for us to understand this paper to look at these two ontologies so we've covered levels of analysis we've covered cultures DAC outcomes provide a culturally neutral basis for framing leadership. Okay. Outcomes are, are assumed to be produced at every level, so we're not worried about that. Um, it doesn't limit the processes and structures. Fine. And it emphasizes new practices that produce it. Whereas in the tripod ontology, emerging practices that cannot be described in terms of leadership fellowship are ignored. They're not recognized. Whereas in the DAC ontology, we might be able to find some new ways of thinking about how these outcomes are produced that don't rely on single leader follower interaction. So I'm not looking at all of this because this is just reviewing that tripod ontology. How emerge, emerging leadership theory reveals the limits of the tripod? Well, we've touched on this. I might want to read this in greater detail, but I don't think so. But let's just look at the title. So shared distributed leadership, totally. You know, in lots of organizations now, leadership isn't just leader follower. It's much more shared. We have self-managing teams, distributed leadership, system of interacting individuals yeah i have that in my context you might wonder whether you have it in your context or whether you could do with having it in your context complexity leadership now this is interesting um complexity theory talks about how if you wish to look at a situation in which there are so many interactions, you can't control each interaction. You might want to look at the culture that underpins those interactions. You might want to look at the infrastructure that underpins those interactions, rather than looking at the individual interactions themselves. So I can see how this DAC approach is drawing on complexity theory, and it, but it's being pragmatic about it. It's driving us towards looking at all these different interactions in terms of how they produce direction, alignment, and commitment. It's relational. Yep, totally get that. Meaning is generated and sustained in the context of ongoing relationships. So leader, follower, and shared goals is not fixed. The meaning is continuously being framed and reframed from context to context and from one time to another. Now, that works for me. I'm working on generating some... Um, more dynamic and vibrant communities of practice in the business school and what we're seeking to do there is to not have one particular leader or one particular follower but to respect that all of us can lead in our own areas but all of us could learn something from each other and we're trying to continuously frame and reframe how we teach in our specialist areas and how those areas link to one another so i'm i'm liking this this point is an interesting one the tripod ontology relies on individual psychology. So it's saying, what are the individual characteristics of the leader? What are the characteristics of the follower? Um, so it has this individual characteristic-based approach. Complexity science instead looks at not individual interactions, but all of the interactions together. And the type of pattern and social order that those interactions create. I, you know, they're saying in my context, I can't look at every single interaction between one faculty member and the other, talking about their teaching, but I can maybe help creating infrastructure and um, look at how dynamic those interactions are. So the relational approach that they're taking here opens up the question of how leadership arises through the overall interactions and negotiation of social order among organizational members. So here is the framework based on the tripod ontology. So I've got leader behaviors, follower behaviors. I've got these characteristics, the sort of psychology. What psychology um, underlies a leader? What psychology underlies a follower? I've got a context, obviously my organization or 
situation will will um, have an uh, impact on follower behaviors and leader behaviors and then I've got some type of shared goals and the emphasis is on the leader leading the follower um, so that arrow is bigger if I scroll down the stuff here about the beliefs to produce the DAC as, and determinants and justifications for practices maybe I'm getting a bit lost here DAC is a means to attaining ends. Oh, look, I've got a diagram. I'm going to scroll right down to this diagram. Snuff all the words. Right, okay, so this is a contrast to the, on the tripod ontology. Here, I've got individual leadership beliefs. I've got collectorship, collective leadership beliefs. So that's saying if we share our beliefs about why we're bothering with leadership here, we might get some leadership practices. People might, in this collective, start behaving as leaders. Not all of the time, but some of the time, all of the people in the collective will behave as leaders. And then that will produce the direction, alignment, and commitment. We'll all understand where we're going. We'll all have some working practices that will create that alignment, and we'll be committed to it. And then I've got longer-term outcomes. So this is saying, I won't necessarily create value for the organization until I've got that direction alignment commitment. And interesting, I've got some feedback here. So I'm saying maybe whether I get direction alignment commitment will be a function of those leadership beliefs. So getting that belief in the system working seems to be quite important. Mm, I haven't bothered to underline anything here. So, oh, here, another table. We're liking tables. How the DAC ontology transcends, goes beyond, but also includes the tripod ontology. And I can, I can cope with this. If I look at how faculty in the business school share their teaching ideas, best practice, future practice, within all of that are going to be leaders and followers. But also the DAC ontology allows me to look at all of those leadership and followership interactions as a whole. So it's not that I'm saying there won't be leaders and followers. I'm saying that those interactions will be who's a leader and who's a follower will change quite frequently, making the interactions quite messy. So if I was in a different situation, I might want to think just of me and my followers. But if I'm wanting to think about this collective of faculty, I, I might want to use the DAC ontology. I suppose it's the equivalent to looking at a single Twitter account, looking at how many followers they have, and looking at how a hashtag might move dynamically between leaders and followers. And I actually don't want to look at one hashtag, I want to look at several hashtags, because I want to look at how lots of vibrant new teaching ideas are buzzing about our community. Leadership culture, now this I am quite interested in because I can see that surrounding that diagram that we just looked at is a leadership culture. If I'm in an organization that doesn't accept or promote leaders and followers being very interactive and someone leading one day and somebody leading the next, I'm going to struggle to create my communities of practice. Leadership context, I haven't bothered to underline that. Oh, I'm going to go straight to this outcome. I'm a pragmatist, I'm a manager, I want to know <laughs> more about the outcome stuff. Here it's saying three independent but interrelated outcomes. So it's saying without direction and alignment and commitment, I'm not going to get very far. I need all three. Direction is shorthand for shared direction. Well, that makes sense. We've got to share this direction. I'm not quite, quite sure whether I have communicated it communicated enough around these communities of practice what the shared direction is maybe. Alignment refers to the organization and coordination. Well, we've got some good IT behind us, so I reckon I've got that sorted. Mutual commitment. Maybe people, because I'm at the beginning of this work, haven't quite seen the benefit to them. So we need to, I need to think about that a bit more. Feedback loop from DAC directly to practices, C figure two, or well, we looked at that. That is when a collective attempts to redress problems in producing it by implementing existing practices more skillfully or engaging a different practice. So that's saying if I'm not getting the DAC that um, 
I think we need, I need to go back to looking at what practices are occurring. And if I'm not getting those, I need to look back at the beliefs in the system. So longer term outcomes. In the shorter term, and this again was in the figure, we saw that it would produce direction, alignment and commitment. In the longer term, we would get those longer range goals that would add value to the, to the organization. In my case, the longer range goals I'm aiming for is um, vibrant teaching practices that so we're constantly renewing them and not reinventing the wheel. You know, if somebody else has really got a practice in teaching that works, Rather than starting from scratch, I want to take that and adapt it to my own context. Oh, look, and here we have the word adaptation. Brilliant. Yeah, I, can, I like that notion of adaptation. It works for me in my peer setting in the university of getting faculty to share teaching practices. Applying the DAC framework to the study of leadership. Now, here are some couple of questions. So when this video is over, I could get a piece of paper and ask myself these questions. So how do leaders and followers interact to attain their shared goals? What beliefs and practices enable people in, in the collectives with shared work to produce DAC? And look at the emergence, design, dynamics, and development of leadership beliefs and practices. And then it's saying, oh, interesting, how do leadership beliefs and practices change over time? So maybe I'm saying at this early stage, I need to look at individual leaders and followerships to get my community of practice up and running. Then I should be able to look more at um, how, as a whole, lots of different leadership followership interactions are creating direction, alignment, and commitment, and um, better teaching practices. And then whether those beliefs and practices are changing over time. So we might have some new associates, we might have some new staff, and that might change the dynamic of my collective. So it's saying watch out for how leadership beliefs and practices might alter over time. But I'm not yet there, there yet. <coughs> this is saying DAC applied to leadership development. So how can individuals develop the requisite skills, knowledge and behavior to influence and lead others? So you need to be careful in a peer review setting that people are confident enough to lead, that you're not making the assumption that they even know how to lead and have the confidence to put forward their views. So understanding behavior of an individual acting as a leader in terms of the individual's participation in webs of belief and practice. So I could think about people at individual level and whether they're participating in the belief that if we work together as faculty, we'll all come out of it better. So this is more detail about peer context. So theory of leadership in peer context, so much as it is asymmetrical influence. Yes, so from the perspective of the tripod, what distinguishes a leader from followers is not necessarily differences in, author in authority or power or differences in traits or characteristics. It's this asymmetrical influence, and that really works for me. You, it has to be in my sharing of teaching practices that some people think they can influence others at the same time as thinking they can be influenced by others. So it's capacity to smoothly switch the leader and follower roles. Now what I'm also thinking here is I need to give this paper to a student of mine in another um, leadership class I teach because she was asking about this. She was saying I, I get this leadership followership stuff Jill but what I don't get is in the work that we're doing in class in any one hour who is leader is switching because they've chosen in some work that they're doing to adopt a distributed leadership start so they've got a self-managed team no one person is a leader so she might well um, like this paper to help think about direction alignment and commitment in her team as the leaders and followers are constantly switching so that tripod ontology is not particularly useful for her so rapid alternation of influence from individual to individual is taken as a peer context since on balance there's no asymmetrical influence Oh, I don't know what that means. The rapid alternation of influence is taken as a peer context. Hmm, not sure. But this does make more sense. 
mutual adjustment, shared sense making, collective learning on mutual transformation. So yes, we need a dance of coordinated influence. That's what I'm looking for in my um, community of practice in the business school. I want people to dance and but be coordinated in their dance. For some people to lead, some people to follow. So let's summarize. The tripod ontology supports a view of leadership as commanding, telling, persuading, influencing, and motivating. Whereas the DAC ontology supports a view of leadership as dialogue and sense-making, conceived as activities in which individuals meet one another in the middle of a new mutual transformation. Well, that's where I want to get to with my community of practice in the business school. I want to get us to a point where we're um, constantly helping each other to transform each other. It's not a one leader transforming followers, it's everybody transforming each other in different ways. So I've got this complexity and web of beliefs and activities going on. So that's it. I hope that's been useful in showing you, as I said, three things. One, introducing you to this notion that leadership maybe needs to be slight, viewed slightly different when we're talking about lots of people leading and influencing each other. So in a peer-to-peer -peer context, that doesn't mean that the tripod ontology isn't valid. It is when you're wanting just to look at a particular leader and their followers around a particular issue. So that's one thing we've looked at. Second is looking at how those diagrams and tables are constructed. You could, hopefully by the time you get to your assessment, construct your own diagram with bits and pieces of theory, or your own table comparing two different approaches, and how you're getting some things as regards your practice from one approach, and some things from another. And thirdly, I've just begun to talk through how this paper is proving to be useful to me as a practicing manager in creating a more vibrant community within our business school of sharing teaching practices and respecting that everybody has something to contribute. Everybody can be a leader in this community of practice that we're um, building on the basis of some IT and on the basis of some face-to-face -face meetings. I hope that's been useful. Um, let me know. Speak to you soon.